C. Lindelof videos, college algebra logarithms used to find the doubling time of compound interest. I'm going to start with this idea that you have to have memorized, is that the amount of money that you have is, when compounded, is the principal amount times the quantity 1 plus the rate at which you're being paid over the number of periods per year, so compounding periods, times n times t power, where t is time in years. And what we're given in this scenario is we're asked to double our money. So we need to double. So our job here is to double this. They give us our interest rate, and they give us our compounding period. So to double this, um, the first thing I'm going to do always is I'm going to fill in as many of the blanks as I can with the information that's provided. So I'm going to rewrite this and say the amount of money that we have is, is equal to the principal times 1 plus R. If they give us the rate is 20%. Remember, for R, they want it as a decimal, so we have 0.2. And also, they give us the number of compounding periods because it's compounded annually, which means 1. Again, they give us the compounding periods is 1, so 1 times T. I'm going to go ahead and clean all that crap up, but just so you can see where I got it. So we have this, T and 0.2. And our question here is, how much time will it take? How much time will it take? Uh, you can see here we still have three variables, which is a really bad sign. And we don't want to freak anybody out, but it's a really bad sign. What we need is one variable. Otherwise, we get something back called a literal equation, which is not a number. We want a number back. So isn't it true if they ask us to double our money, they want two times our principal, isn't it? So whatever amount we invest, we want two times that. So A is 2P, right? The amount we want back is two times the amount we invested. So we have 2P is equal to P times 1 plus 0.2 is 1.2 to the T power. Just to make a point here, if this was in economics or finance, doubling or tripling is reasonable. P past that, I mean, you're getting a little bit greedy, I think. But if I wanted to know three times to, have to, to triple it, it would be 3P I would want back, right? So I could still replace that. Because we're not given the amount that we're supposed to double, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to divide both sides, right? This is the relationship between P and this quantity here is multiplication. So I'm going to divide this side here by P and this side here by P. 2P divided by P is equal to 2. P divided by P is 1, and 1 times this quantity is 1.2T. Here is the time and place where logarithmic functions really, really come into play. And as I read all, how all these authors are saying that you should answer it, I'm a little bit put off because it doesn't matter in this case what logarithmic function what log base you choose. Kind of the historic logic is to use the common log, which is log base 10, right? Which is just log of x. If there's nothing here, we assume there's a 10, or ln. And the reason that that's common um, logic is that's what calculators do best. Most scientific calculators have an ln button and a log button, but it's hard to change the bases. So I just want to show you this. I'm going to choose to use ln. I'm going to, I'm going to apply the log, I'm going to apply log to both sides. As long as I do it equally, I'm inside the rules of, of arithmetic. And then if you remember the third property of logarithmic functions, it's that you can, once you apply this log, you can take the exponential value and you can roll it back to here. So I'm just applying a rule of logarithms, and I get ln of 2 is equal to t ln 1.2. Keep in mind, please, 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 that what we're looking for is t, because it will just help you decide what to do next. Right? We're looking for this value. That's the value that we're missing. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 1.2. So we'll have ln of 2 divided by ln of 1.2, sorry, of 1.2 is equal to t. I get that you're probably not very impressed by that, and I get that because now we need to calculate. But I do want you to know that this thing on the left-hand side is a numeric value. It's a number. I don't know what that number is, but it is a number. And that number needs to be evaluated, and your professor will definitely agree it needs to be evaluated with a calculator. 
Now I just want to demonstrate these things to you. So I'm going to do that little piece of math here. So I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I am going to do ln of, right, it's ln of 2, isn't it? Over, check me out here, ln of 1.2. So there's my answer. Remember that I used ln, I didn't use log. So the answer is 3.8. They're asking for how many years, so you should probably round up. You should ask your professor how he or she wants that done. But I'm going to say it's about equal to 4, right? Always under-promise and over-deliver. So if you tell the person within four years you will have doubled it, that's a very safe thing to say. What I want to show you is this. That What I want to illustrate to you as my last point before I let you go is this. If I just did this... Let me just start. If I did this, look, I said ln of 2 over ln of 1.2 is this number right here. I'm suggesting it doesn't matter what log value you take. So I'm just going to take log. If I skip the base here, it automatically makes it log base 10. So I'm going to make it log of 2, just like it is here, log of 2. And then I'm going to go down to the denominator, and I'm going to make it log of 1.2. I'm just trying to illustrate to you that it doesn't matter what log you take. Same answer, okay? So whatever your calculator does best, but I just want you to know that it, the reason that there's this rule is because it's easiest to do, but it does not matter arithmetically. So thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I did, the other, I did another video on how to find the rate, so thanks.